Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of this new series about data. Here we talk about fetching data from various sources like Google Sheets, Google Analytics, Search Console, MongoDB, MySQL and many others and how to perform various operations on them. We also learn how to create interesting and beautiful data visualizations. By the way, if you missed our previous tutorials on Google Sheets and Google Analytics, have a look at it as well. You will find the link in the description. I am Michal from mdbootstrap.com and today I will show you how to create your own simple SEO dashboard and how to fetch data from Google Search Console. Take a look at what exactly we are going to do today. In the upper left corner, there is a dashboard that we'll create using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Here are some basic SEO metrics, clicks, impressions, CTR and average position. In the lower left corner is a search console, the official Google search engine optimization tool. These are data from one of my side projects. But before we start, a small request. If you like what you do, please give a thumbs up to this video, leave us a comment and subscribe to our channel. It will help us grow and create more valuable tutorials for you in the future. And now, without further ado, let's jump into the code. During our work with data, we'll use a free library, Easy Data. Easy Data is a new project built by MDB team. It's actually a small plugin, but it will significantly facilitate our work with Google Tools and other data sources. If you want to support the development of the Easy Data project, give it a star on GitHub. We will be very happy to see this project growing. However, before we start coding, we need to make appropriate preparation on the Google Cloud Platform. Without it, we won't be able to access any Google data. Go to the Google Cloud Platform website. You can find the link in the description and click the button next to the logo. I have a Google Analytics tutorial written here because I previously created an application with this name, so you will have it differently, but it doesn't matter, so just click it. Next, click New Project in the top right corner. Next, name your app whatever you want. I will name it Search Console Tutorial. Then click Create. Then make sure that you have selected the correct project in the menu on the top. Select the project you just created, in my case it will be Search Console Tutorial. Next we need to create credentials for our project. Expand the menu by clicking hamburger icon in the top left corner and hover APIs and services and then choose credentials and click it. Then click Create Credentials and choose OAuth Client ID. Next we need to configure Consent Screen, so click this blue button on the right. Choose External and click Create. Now we need to choose a name for our app, so I'll name it the same as previously, Search Console Tutorial. Then we need to provide an email. So this is an email of this Google account. And then here below, I will need to provide a contact email to the developer. So I will use exactly the same email as before. Click Save and Continue. Here we don't need to do anything, so just click Save and Continue. And here we need to add a test user. So I will use the same email as before. So this is the, the, exactly the same Google account that I am using when creating this app on Google Cloud Platform and click Add. And then once again click Save and Continue. Now at the summary card we can click back to the dashboard. Now again click Credentials and once again click Create Credentials and choose OAuth Client ID once again. Choose Application Type Web Application. 
Here we can choose whatever name you want. I will name it search console web client. Now we need to provide the URI addresses under which our application will be available. I'm going to test this application locally on my computer. So if you want to do this tutorial exactly like me, then you need to enter localhost addresses too. However, at the end of this tutorial, I will also show you how to publish your application to the internet. So you can do it as well. I'm going to provide two localhost addresses. The first one will be localhost 5500 and the second, we need to remove the slash at the end and the second will be localhost 5501. So two addresses and the same here in the section authorize redirect your eyes. 5500 and 5501. Then we click create. We can close this window. And the last thing we need to do on Google Cloud Platform is to enable Search Console APIs. So in the menu on the left, click Dashboard. And then click Enable APIs and Services. And type Search Console. Click it. And click Enable. That's it for Google Cloud Platform. Now move on to Search Console itself. To download data from Search Console, of course you need a Search Console account that already contains some data. I will use the account of one of my site projects. If you are not sure if you have the appropriate permissions for this account, in the menu on the left, click Settings and here you will find Users and Permissions. After you make sure you have appropriate access to the account of Search Console that already contains some data, we can move on and download Easy Data plugin. So go to easydata.mdbgo.io, you will find a link in the description and click download button. Then choose Search Console example. Now let's unzip the package and open it with a code editor. Open index.html. Now one important note, to be able to fetch a data from any Google tool and display it locally on your computer, you need a live server plugin. So if you want to do this tutorial exactly as I do, you need to use the same code editor. So I'm using Visual Studio Code and here when you click on view and then click extensions and then you type live server you will find a very useful plugin i already have installed this so i'm not going to do this again but you should install this and then after you have it installed you can right click on index.html and click open with live server so now anytime you change anything in your code, the browser will refresh automatically and this emulate the real server. So thanks to this, we can also fetch a data from Google tools. So the last important thing is that we need to change this IP address to localhost because this is the URI that we provided in Google Cloud Platform. So localhost. And as you can see, it's still working fine. All right, now let's have a look what exactly do we have in our HTML. So here we have a few files from MDB UI kit, which is not necessary to fetch a data from Google, but it provides us a UI kit. And this is a useful library that allows us to create beautiful UIs and data visualization. So if you don't need you can remove it and it will still work, but mm, I strongly recommend you to mm, um, make advantage of this and uh, to make your life easier. Below we have our navigation and our simple 
dashboard. So we are not going to design our dashboard because we already have it uh, for our purpose. It's a very simple dashboard. In the next tutorials, we will learn how to create more advanced components and more advanced data visual visualizations. But right now we just want to do some basic stuff. Now in the script section, we also have a JavaScript file for MDB UI kit and below we have a Google API JavaScript which is necessary to fetch anything from Google and then we have Easy Data plugin which is uh, crucial for this project. Below we have a small snippet where we should provide a client ID of our app from Google Cloud Platform then we have a simple function to display our data in HTML with these specific IDs and below we have an option that we need to provide a property ID of our search console account. This will be a simple address of our website that we want to access the data from. Then we specify the date range we want to get the data and uh, actually that's it. Here we have login buttons that are necessary to authenticate us in this app. So let's start from providing our client ID from Google Cloud Platform. Let's go back to our Google Cloud Platform and here let's click Uh, let's extend our menu on the left and click credentials once again and here we have our client ID so let's copy this and let's paste it here next let's add the address of the website from the search console so here is the address of the website that I want to that I want to use so let me paste it here I will leave these dates but of course if you want you can change it to whatever you want now let's see if it works let's get back to our dashboard and it's always a good idea to clear the cache before we start so here in the application tab when you launch Google Inspector, Google uh, Console. Let's clear the cache for localhost 5500. Let's refresh the page and then click login so we can authenticate. Choose your account that you provided access to on Google Cloud Platform and type your password. Click continue, make sure you selected all the checkboxes and click continue again. And here we have, these are our data from our search console. By the way, did you know that thanks to MD Bootstrap you can use free hosting for your projects? We call it MDB Go and it's really great. Visit mdbgo.com for more information. In the description of this video, you will also find a link to the detailed tutorial on how to use MDB Go hosting and how to install MDB CLI, which is a fantastic and free supporting tool that provides many useful functionalities. Now, let me just show you how easy it is to publish our newly created project on the internet thanks to MDB Go. I already have MDB CLI installed on my computer, so now all I need to do is to run my terminal and then I need to enter the path of the project I want to upload. So here is the directory where we have downloaded the MDB package and where we have been working during this tutorial. So let me just copy this path and let's enter this. And now I need to type only a single command MDB publish and I will choose NPM package manager and then all I need to do is to choose a name for my project. 
I will name it Search Console Tutorial. Click Enter and accept all the other options. And after a few seconds, my application is available in the internet at this link. Let's see if it works. And yes, it does. Super fast and extremely useful. There is one problem. As you can see, our data are not displaying right now. And that's because now we are using this URL address. And on Google Cloud Platform, as you remember, we only provided localhost addresses. So to fix it, we'll need to also add this address to our app on Google Cloud Platform. Let's try to fix it right now. Let's copy this address. Let's get back to Google Cloud Platform and let's edit these credentials and let's add new addresses here. Remember to remove slashes, slash, slashes at the end of URLs and click Save. And you will probably need to wait some time until the Google accepts this. Uh, it can even be like 15 or 30 minutes, so um, be patient. And that would be the basic setup for this simple SEO dashboard. I have to admit, that's quite a lot of configuration for such a simple data, but this is the way the Google works. In the next tutorials, we'll learn how to do more advanced operations and visualizations. Anyway, if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And that's it for this video. I hope you will find it useful. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.